All right, well, this is going to be the last video, I hope, in this series of videos. Um, we've got the motor off the stand, getting it ready to put it back in the car, and we've got some final dressing to do. Uh, as you can see, just put the rear seal up. We're going to put the rear seal in, we're going to put the dust cover on, we're going to put the flex plate on, torque the flex plate bolts, plus flex plates all on, spin it around, and torque the, uh, torque the main bolt on the harmonic balancer. So, as far as putting this seal in, it's obviously significant in diameter. Um, I use a pipe adapter that I got at a local hardware store. Same as on the 4.7. Um, what does it say it is? It says adapter coupling, 4x3 adapter coupling. Uh, just take your seal in there. Look around on the PVC cabinets. Display until you see one that works. This one works. Like I said, this is also only used on the 4.7, which is why I was pretty confident it would work here. So just follow your way around. Make sure it doesn't get too cocked. It always wants to cock a little. So. being cocked sideways or anything. Alright. And it looks like we're in. We'll go around it. Make sure it's bottomed out. And it is. So, just that easy. It's the only time we'll use that 4x3 pipe coupler, but I've used it now on a couple of motors. The next thing we want to do is place the dust cover. And uh, it goes right up here, dowel on each side, and uh, it's just there to minimize the amount of trash that gets up into the bell housing. And uh, that's that. And then it's time for the flex plate. We have to go in there in just a second and get us uh, get some Loctite. I definitely recommend Loctite for these. So let me go do that and then we'll finish this flex plate installation. Alright, so we've got our thread locker and we're applying thread locker to the bolts as we install them. And then we're going to buzz them up and then start torquing them. The torque on these bolts is 70 foot pounds. Uh, in order to torque these bolts, you'll have to hold the motor from the front. Or, well, or another option is probably easier, you can put a screwdriver one of these holes and lock it against the block but either way you gotta go to 70 foot pounds on these bolts and then we're gonna see about about the front bolt main bolt on the dampener <coughs> somehow we have to get that little wonder up to 130 foot pounds but I got help today so it should be cool When you go to put this thing on, these holes are keyed. It'll only go on one way. So just rotate it till everything lines up. And then you're on. Make sure this plate is on the back. <coughs> you can sneak it on after the fact. It's not a whale of a lot of fun. So we're going to get something to pin this uh, flex plate to the block. And uh, see, if we can, see if we can put the torque on these things. Get right back with you. Alright, so we've, we've got this torque now. As it stays at 70 foot pounds, we just basically put a screwdriver here through one of these holes, lock jammed it against the block, and then went around. No bolt, no bolt pattern to worry about. So we went around here with the uh, torque wrench, took it 70 pounds. So, back in the motor's dressed, ready to be installed. Now we just need to torque the front end. <laughs> the uh, uh, harmonic balancer bolt to 130 foot pounds. Yeah, but we're going to have some fun trying to torque this main dampener bolt. It's a 21 millimeter. The first thing we're going to do is rotate the motor until my man back there can get a lock on it. 
And then, 130 foot pounds. Which is pretty much more than I got in my butt. Ah. There's 130 foot pounds. Which is basically me standing on the wrench. So, yay for us. Motor is ready to go in the car. Now we're going to finish up this video on a 3.7 liter Jeep engine rebuild. Um, you can see it's installed. Didn't cover the installation uh, just because I just didn't have a lot of help. Um, but the bottom line is uh, it goes in the way it comes out. Uh, reference you to the 4.7 liter Jeep rebuild series. I think in that one we show actually installing that motor. Uh, this motor installs very similarly. You'll see there's quite a bit of space here because this uh, vehicle was able to hold the 4.7 liter and uh, so it's uh, it's got lots of room to work the challenges are oh, access to the bell housing bolts access to the uh, exhaust bolts things like that and there's no way around that but you just got to work at it uh, keep in mind if you're having trouble accessing certain bolts raise and lower this motor don't secure the engine mounts uh, right off get the engine pretty well mounted uh, to the transmission and then worry about that um, lifting and raising and lowering the motor will give you much better access to some of those bolts you just kind of have to play with a little bit about which is the best approach so the motor's good uh, let's talk a little bit about the damage to the motor I think in part two of this ser series we talk of what I about what uh, was going on and yeah, I was wrong um, very wrong in fact did hydrolock uh, one of the, my YouTube friends make mention of that and uh, he was quite correct as I review the data uh, at the end of this thing now I'm kind of piecing some of everything together and looks like we sucked water up and he sucked water up into the motor uh, through the intake uh, here and uh, managed to hydrolock uh, the number five piston at a minimum uh, thinking potentially potentially we got some water in number two and maybe what bent the rod there but apparently water got into number seven as it came up uh, that water compressed doesn't compress well and uh, sheared that rod broke that valve um, and we got pretty he got pretty lucky uh, you know rod didn't go through the side of the block or anything silly like that so uh, that made it rebuildable uh, what happened though when that rod broke is a piece of that rod flew up in the block and uh, here's, a, here's the piece in question flew up in the block and actually got stuck between the balance shaft and the block which sheared the uh, sheared the gear off the front of the balance shaft ultimately it's why the bolt ended up coming out and uh, so the balance shaft was destroyed and that's also that shock apparently is what broke the tensioner shoes uh, on the side chains and I didn't cover it in the video series, but it also uh, moved the alignment of the gear. Um, there's a listen on the on the idler gear in the center. I showed it in the timing section. On the idler gear, there's a back gear that drives the balance shaft. That gear is pressed onto that idler gear assembly, and then there's a roll pin uh, that goes in there that holds that thing in time. That roll pin sheared. Uh, roll off uh, rotated that gear on the idler assembly by about 20 25 degrees so we had to press that off realign it press it back in put a new shear pin in it and uh, that's been resolved so a number of things happened at that instant when water went up in this motor truthfully pretty surprised it was rebuildable but it was um, and as far as I'm concerned it's as good as new now and honestly for these motors it's better than new is now the valve seats have been peened into the heads and they're not gonna they're not gonna try to come apart uh, very easily at all uh, which is a bit of a weakness in this motor so everything's hooked back up AC's reinstall recharge replace the uh, AC dryer here and uh, it's looking good it's ready to go home um, gonna fire it up for you let you see it hear it and uh, then we'll call it not too sure how the audio is gonna be with this thing running but uh, it's a runner and it's smooth, idles nice, uh, about 600 RPM, 650, and uh, it's running good. I've put about oh, 20, 25 miles on it, driving it, 
since we put it back together and uh, it runs really nice drives really good so that pretty much finishes up this video series if you have any questions feel free to post feel free to like subscribe uh, whatever you feel like uh, 3.7 liter Jeep motor and a 2006 Jeep Grand Cherokee I think it's a winner so I hope you have a good day thanks for watching bye bye